year six and welcome to book club today. Yesterday we read the chapter where the children discovered a sloth and they named it Abacachi. If there's anyone, any Portuguese speakers out there who can correct my pronunciation of it, I'd be very grateful. Right, today's chapter is called The Monkeys and the Bees. Jungles, Fred found, were full of corners and crannies. They held secrets, but the secrets emerged in the most unexpected ways. They would never, he thought, have found the scrap of paper that changed everything if it hadn't been for the joint efforts of the monkeys and the ants and the bees. Max saw them first, late that afternoon. He'd been lying on his back, staring at the sky, while Leela and Con and Fred sat by the fire and tried to make a plan. The problem was, despite being told very firmly to stay put, Max kept trying to explore, and he was a small five-year-old in a very large jungle. How sure are you that the raft will hold? asked Leela. Fred considered. The raft was wide and strong, and the vines were wrapped so thickly to secure it that the raft was more green than brown. It looked like a rectangle of floating cricket pitch. But, he thought, the pilot had presumably been just as certain about the plane. Medium sure, he saw Con's face. Hi, medium. And walking would take weeks, he said. We know Manaus is on the Amazon, so if we sail down river, we should reach it. Max approached on and sat on Leela's feet, tugging at her sock. Leela! He dug a chunk of snot from his nose and wiped it on the grass. Except we don't know if Manaus is up river or down river from here said Con. So we have a 50-50% chance of death. Leela, said Max, listen to me. But there's a 50% chance of life, said Fred. Con smirked and he resisted the urge to flick Max's snot at her. Can you hear yourself, she said. Do you know how insane that sounds? Leela, Max tugged harder at her sock. Did you see? Did you see how the monkeys fought the bees? What do you mean, asked Leela. Back had taken up a position draped across one of her shoulders. Back legs, back is what they call a sloth, um, draped across one of her shoulders. Back legs hooked under her armpits. He looked, Fred thought, like the epaulets of father's old army uniform. The monkeys won, said Max. I followed them. Max, what are you talking about? Leela picked him up and held his face close to hers, blazingly angry. I thought you were in the den. You know you're not allowed to move. I told you. If I can't trust you, I'm going to tie you to me. Max pouted. I didn't go far. I stayed away because I don't like bees. Maxie, don't lie. There are no bees, said Leela. I've seen every flying thing. Ants and beetles and mosquitoes, but no bees. It was over there, said Max. He pointed to the other side of the clearing, among tall rubber trees. In the high bits. Leela raised her eyebrows over Max's head. Was this a dream, Max, or in real life? Real life, said Max. I don't believe you. Real life, Max looked furious. Real life, the monkeys washed their hands in the ants and then they fought the bees. I have no idea what you're trying to describe, said Con, but it sounds terrifying. Max got up, roared and stamped, accidentally stepping on Con's knuckles. Con gave a yell and slapped at his ankles. That hurt, she said. Don't hit him, said Leela. You're not paying attention, any of you, said Max. Listen, Fred looked at Max. The boy's eyes were unhappy and a little wild. We are listening, Max, he said. No, come. Max took hold of Con's hand and pulled her up and towards the trees, his small feet thumping determinedly into the earth. Con looked surprised but let herself be led, jogging beside him. She didn't comment on the state of Max's hand, <clears throat> which was sticky with unknown substances. Fred and Leela ran after them. There, said Max. They were there. He pointed at an ant nest, a great bulbous structure built on the tree's trunk, bulging out of it like a pot belly. There were no monkeys in sight. They were here. Really soon ago, said Max. They'll come back. Skeptically, Fred sat down. 
Max sat on Leela's legs. Baka clung to Leela's shirt. Right, we'll read the rest tomorrow. Bye, you six.